This is John Walton, and you're listening to the Power Play Point Podcast with the Blue Lighter on Point and Anna Knox. Here's Wilson, and on the right circle, they score! Hello and welcome once again to the Power Play Point Podcast. This is your host, the Blue Liner on Point, talking to you live to tape from downtown Glen Burnie, Maryland. And, well, the weather for most of this week pretty much matched the um, excitement we're all feeling. Or... The lack of. Lack of, uh, yeah. Um... Uh, I, I, yeah, it was, it was, it, it was a shitty the, week. <laughs> the The rain's gone, but the, the, the gloom is still here. And, um, what, I mean, what, what's, what else is there to say? Three games, three losses and, uh, just all all kinds of bad um not not yeah. conducive not conducive to a playoff uh run so I'm in and out. but we'll talk about it anyway uh as you can hear in the background uh the <clears throat> with me back again from uh extended break is <laughs> the mermaid from centerville virginia anna knox yep hello hello how was break it was good it was good. I appreciate you letting me have the time off, boss. Uh, yeah. yeah, it was, uh, you know, we, we did like the staycation here for spring break. And, um, and then today I went to a matinee horror movie. A matinee horror movie. What'd you see? Uh, the Omen. The new one. Oh yeah. This is the one, this is the one that's supposed to explain everything. And it does. It's not, uh, to be honest, it's not, I mean, like the original, the, the cool thing was, because do you guys have an Alamo draft house by you? Or do you ever go to those? Mm, no, not really. I don't uh, okay. even know what that is. It's like, a, so it's a movie theater that um, they serve food, you know, during um, during the entire time that you're there, you just, you know, can put on a little light and, um, but they show new movies but they and they also just show like a ton of classics so it could be it could be any any genre any um you know like they've they just showed something like hey let's see what's turning you know 40 this week or 45 and then all of those movies that came out back in <laughs> when we were little um are going to be played so like there's just a, it's just very cool you can always just see very cool uh stuff there so uh because i hate going to the movies my family compromised and said we could go to the matinee and we could go to um dalma draft house and they serve cocktails so i had a bloody claudia <laughs> a what a bloody claudia <laughs> i love it I've heard of a Bloody Mary, but what's a Bloody Claudia? A Bloody Claudia has to... So everything is kind of named after a movie. This has to do with um, a vampire... Oh, my God. I can't believe... what I can't believe I just drew a blank on the name. Shit. The Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt, Interview uh, with Vampire. Interview with Vampire, yeah. Sorry about that. What? And yeah. it is a Bloody Mary. Um, and it has like a habanero salt rim um and Oy. then what i love and i don't even know if you know this about me i love olives <laughs> no i never knew that about you. I know. just just a little i figured after two weeks of being away why not throw you a little tidbit about 
something random about me. Yep. Love them. Love them. Love them. So this one was, a, uh, was a green, obviously, and it was a stuff with garlic and it was amazing. And then of course I had chips and queso. Oh, naturally. I mean, come on. Gotta have the queso. Yeah. Um, that, that I did know. That you did know. Yes. Uh, but yeah, no, this, um, this is a good little Bloody Mary and saw the movie. And like I said, not scary, but definitely explains everything and makes you kind of want to go back and watch um, the originals. The first, at least the first two. I didn't realize. Did you know there was like four of them? <laughs> I knew about three of them. Yeah, I didn't know that there was four, but OK. Um, so, yeah, interesting. So that was my afternoon. And then I was like, hey, this is perfect because then I'm going to do the show with you guys or with you. And I sat down and my husband turned the TV on and I just happened to see the last um, 10 seconds of the Pens Bolts game. Yeah. Where they Sucked. lucked out another win. Um, yeah. And I, I have, I have, uh, I stayed with ABC and I have, I actually have the Florida Boston game uh, in Oof. the background on, on mute. Um, it was going to be on mute regardless because I can't stand, well, I can't stand ABC in general, but I, but I really can't stand Ray Ferraro. Yeah. He's so annoying. Yeah. Um, so yeah, that, that's uh, catching my eye in the background. Any score? Uh, uh, one, one, yeah. six, uh, about six minutes left in the first. And okay. uh, I, I promise, uh, I promise I won't be as distracted as, as I was last week. Uh, when we were watching um, Boston College and and Ryan Leonard advance uh, oh, in the Frozen He's Four, so kicking ass. <laughs> yeah, kind of, kind of can't wait. I'm kind of on the fence about him. Um, I kind of can't wait till he gets here, but I, I feel like he needs some time to cook. Yeah, down a level at least. Big so. difference between. Um any level and and coming into the the nhl as we yeah. all know so it's all good all good yeah. but anyways all yeah. we care about is our capitals and what the ever loving f are we gonna do um what the ever loving f indeed um yeah um all right uh let's go ahead rip the band-aid off and uh get get cracking into what the hell happened here um game number one this past week took place uh, April 2nd, first week of April. Um, Buffalo Sabres visiting them, uh, first of two in the in the coming weeks where we go there. And, yeah, um, home of hot wings. And, uh, well, our wings weren't very hot, at least not in this game. Yeah. Uh, it started well enough. Martin Fedovati. Gets his gets his third beautiful shot from the point. Scarbosa Lapierre um, assists on that one. Two forty six in the first to start the game. Uh, Caps were actually playing very very well in this game until about I want to say the eight or ten minute mark. Um, of the or first otherwise, period. Oh, the first period. Not not very long. In fact, not very long after they scored that goal. Right. Um, it was as if they just said, okay, we've done enough. Um, give me my money. I'm going home. Yep. And no, not the case. Um, because Buffalo came to play and play. They did indeed. 1542 next goal was the next goal. Zimgis Girgensons, his eighth. Uh, Rasmus Dalin, Owen Power, and the assist on that one. Tie game at 1542. And then uh, 68 seconds later, JJ Pajerka, who always, another guy that always seems to fucking kill us. His 27th on the power play. Uh, Alex Tuck, Zach Binson, uh, the. Uh, Pretty good rookie, if I do say so. I don't think he'll win the Calder, but uh, I think he's a pretty outstanding rookie. Uh, his 15th assist on that one puts the Sabres up for, well, for good, as it would turn out. Um, but Jerka, again, 10.54 second period, puts them up uh, 3-1. With This would be the winning goal. Tuck on the assist on that one. Dylan Strom uh, gets a late power play goal, and... Um, 
Buffalo, you can have your hot wings because we'd rather have McNuggets. This happened 1914 in the second period. Carlson and Ovechkin on the assist on that one. Didn't um, you like me? I was like, all right, fuck yeah. Dylan Strom, rally this fucking team and let's yes. go. Like, I, I'm, I'm sorry that this episode is going to be like an uh, infinite amount of, of F-bombs and I don't. Oh, it's going to be. Uh, but I was like, fuck yeah. Like, let's go. And like, let's rally and let's do this. And nope. Nope. <laughs> yeah, whole lot of whole lot of nope after this goal. I figured after that goal, the Caps would kind of wake up and well they I I guess in a sense they did wake up cuz they would end up getting 14 shots on goal in the third. But too late. Too little, too late. None of them none of them went in and the Sabres had an answer for everything. Yeah. Um, got got an early power play. Uh, Darlene, second point of the night, 18th goal. Pajerka and Tage Thompson on the assists on that one. And it was just chasing the game after that. Um, one minute, 45 seconds later. Oh, yeah, th- this, this sequence killed them. 145, Thompson scores. Quinn and Benson on the assists. And then another 45 seconds after that. Let me say that again for effect. Another 45 seconds after they'd already given up two goals in a minute 45. So two minutes and 30 seconds, they managed to screw up and give up three goals. Alex Tuck, his 20th, Thompson and Darlene. I'm saying the same names over and over again. Mm-hmm. You'd have thought maybe, maybe, just maybe they'd have figured out, okay, maybe these are the guys we need to stop. Uh, mm. hmm <laughs> and, yep. and if, 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 look, if you're already, if you listening out there, you're already tired of my sarcastic, sardonic, whatever the hell you want to call it, I don't care because I'm care. full of it right yeah. now. No, because you know what? It, it's time. It like we we have Gil, you know, this podcast and this uh, Facebook page, this this group of of fans have been behind this team since game one, <laughs> this season, and we can vent our frustrations. We're not saying anyone needs to be fired. We're not saying anybody needs to be no. traded. We're just saying, are you effing? kidding me at this late in the season that they look like they just don't give a shit and it's frustrating for us when we saw it just uh the games prior to it you know it's like oh my god what the ever loving fuck happened so i'm gonna blame it on i I, i'll think of something what did the ever love it that that is a (laughs) good question what did the ever loving fuck happen between last week and and now and And here's the one thing i i'm i am sorry that i I think it's been because i haven't talked to you in two weeks (laughs) i feel like i have all this stuff to say now by all means um but i started to think about it and i was like okay so what what changed I will say, and I never put things on one player. I'm never like uh, you know. You've known this about me. I'm not going to put it all on on uh, on the goalie or whatever else. But there truly is something to be said when 77 is not there. You notice that too. Not just on the ice. There is something about TJ Oshie and his vibe in the locker room. His um, contagious uh, positivity, man, because I felt like when he was on the ice and, and yes, like, you know, we, the, the tribute for his thousands game and everything else. And, and then we're not taking anything away from Carlson. We can talk about that too. But there's something about when he is mic'd up or not and the energy and everything just changes and the caps look like they're in a good headspace and they're having fun. And I don't mean fun like, you know, like 
oh, Harlem Globetrotters, like being silly. No, no, no. Like they're having fun. They're not overthinking things. They're not making stupid plays. And there is something about Oshi that just brings out that in the team. And here we are, you know, like the last couple of games, he's not there. Like, who knows what, you know, what's going on. I'm, I'm not, I'm feeling kind of the same as you. It's maybe not looking so good for him. Um, but man, like, I never thought I'd say it, but I really do feel like there's something about his energy that, that brings out the best in these players. And it's like, even if he's injured, maybe they just need to have him recorded and, saying shit in the locker room on speakers to get these guys riled up because they look like they are they're just not into it and they're certainly not playing 60 minutes well i mean it's it's obvious it's more than obvious they they are not the same team Mm -mm. when he's not playing when he's missing when he's out of the lineup they are not the same team I'm so glad one, you and I see the same on this one. <laughs> one guy, one guy, one guy, not even being in the lineup should not make that much of a difference. Agreed. But, but he does. And, and it's not, it isn't like to me, and I think the reason why we, you and I can say this, and, and I will, I will totally stick to my guns on this one, is that there is something to be said, like, when we at the beginning of the season and had to listen to all the the um, bullshit about oh Ovechkin's too old, he's not doing anything, he's not scoring, na na na. Um, still, one player, him not scoring didn't affect the rest of the players. You know what I mean? Like he he still still their captain, still came out, still gave it his all, regardless if he scored or not. Tom right. Wilson, six game. Um, uh, you know, time off, we'll say, uh, suspension, um, didn't voluntary vacation. Uh, yeah. Totally. Like, uh, yeah, exactly. Um, get the baby room ready. Uh, but him not being there didn't change, you know, but there is something when, oh, she's not there. I, I like, I really, I really believe that there's, he just really is, um, I don't know what it, I mean, it's like we all love him, of course. But aside from that, I, I think it's just, it's just very interesting to see how they play and the dynamic of how they play uh, when, when he's on the ice. And it, it's not even that, well, okay, let me, give me, give me a second here. Let me jump back to one week ago. So the the four or so, three or four games they played. Okay, so he didn't. I don't know that. Let's see. Okay, so the Detroit game was last week. That was the one where. uh, Yeah, he was in that game. He got he he got he got an assist in that game. Mm -hmm. So he did get he did manage to get in the score sheet. But regardless. I, I don't know. It's, I don't know I, either. I, I just think it, it's just, it's an interesting thing to to see because I'm, I'm a little like, all right. Well, <laughs> somebody, some, a friend of mine posted something on the page that said, well, it's obvious they need to get younger and they need to get better defensively. And I said, I was like, well, you know what? They've already started that process. That's what this year was all about. Beginning mm-hmm. that process in full. They've mm-hmm. already started to get younger. They've already started to retool the defense. The biggest problem, my answer was, is that somehow you got to replace what it is that Oshi brings to the table because clearly he's, you know, he is that difference where to the point where they play differently because he's not there. Yeah. Yeah, I don't and know what it is. I, I, I honestly I wish I, I knew I, what it was. If I knew yeah. what it was, I would find a way to manufacture it, <laughs> put it in bottles, and sell it and retire. A hundred percent. A hundred percent. But I know. That's not it it's not that simple. It's why it's called an intangible. And spoiler alert, yeah, he was missing from all three games this you know, this, this week's games and all three were losses. Mm-hmm. 
And in fact, they've been on a losing streak technically since late last week. Yeah, since the Toronto game. The abomination. You know, they, they haven't won. They haven't earned a full two points in over a week and a half. And when you're, you know, look, I did say, and we'll get to, <clears throat> pardon me, we'll get to talking points that a bunch of you were nice enough to send via the Facebook page. I saw that. Yay. And one, and one in particular though. Um, yes, I did say, I have been saying that, yes, even if the caps fall flat and don't make the playoffs, still something of a successful season. But I didn't think that in in so failing, well, you know, it's not a failure yet. There's still time. There's still two weeks. So there's time. Um, but. It's looking, it's beginning to look like a failure. And on the way to that failure, I didn't think that we would discover or rediscover um, a whole other problem. But we we have, <laughs> you know, and I'm sure, well, I mean, if you're seeing it and I'm seeing it, I'm sure there's a whole lot of others that are seeing it. Mm -hmm. That there's a, there's, there's a need to... If if we can't have him full time, there's a need to replace whatever it is that Oshi brings. Right. Somehow that has to be replaced, and that that's going to be a huge debate in the coming weeks. Because he's well, all, all right. He's got one year left on his contract, and I heard it said that I don't know if it was in an actual article or in a discussion room somewhere, but if it was me, I would find a way because it he's worth. Six million, I think, is his cap hit okay. or, or the value of his contract. I can't see leaving that amount of money on the table. I, If it was me, I would find a way to make sure that I appear in, you know, X amount of games to fulfill that contract. Mm -hmm. Whatever it is I got to do, you know, see, see a... a, a um, um, a, a wizard or a, a, what's the word I'm thinking of? A wizard, um, um, a doctor, a, um, a, 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 he's, he's Ojibwe. Uh, what <laughs> starts, starts with, starts with an S. Um, <laughs> throw me for I, a loop. I did a, a shaman. That's what it is. A shaman. Uh, uh, well, it, I, I, well, it'd be a shaman because I'm. I would be shaming him into getting better, so he would. It, it, the rest of the team could also be using some shaman too, because okay. they should be a shaman of themselves. <sighs> well, e enough of the mini rant, though. But I mean, that that's point being is yes, you are you are not alone. You you you've noticed something painfully obvious. And mm. yes, it's, it's, I don't know how to fix it. I don't know what, what the quick fix is. Yeah, I don't know either. I mean, I think that I was just, you know, trying me. like I wasn't removed from, from the capitals, this, this two week little time off. I was, uh, you know, just resetting. Um, but I've had a lot to think about a lot of time to think about it. And I'm like, the fuck? What is like? I mean, we all know, like, okay, on the outside, this is what the what OG, uh, OG brings to the team, yes. But man, like, I don't know. I, I just, I, I'm just sort of baffled by everything because when you have, you know, Ovechkin scoring shit twice last night, and you know, we're kind of seeing that, and you're seeing, you know, the the Protus, the Malstein, the Lapierre, like you're seeing players. Like, you know, given that they're all, it's like, but we're still, we're giving it 90%. It's not, but it's not enough. It's not enough. I mean, it, it, and you've met Ian and I've said this for forever for, uh, for us, we've been married 20 years and we are, could not be more opposite, which is why, you know, things are good, <laughs> but I'm the sports person in the family. He is not. Um, and on the, the way back from, the Omen matinee, uh, which sounds weird to say. Um, 
he was like, so are the caps out officially? Like, is there, and I said, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because like, I, I want to be like, no, like they, they can do this, but when you on, and then he says, well, what happens if, if, you know, if they get into the playoffs, if big IF, if they get into the playoffs, would they go past the first, you know, basically the first team they'd have to play? Probably not. <laughs> and, and isn't that terrible to say as a fan? Like you want to say, oh, they're going to make it and they're going to move on and, and this and that. Today, I am feeling a little like meh on the team. Uh, two weeks ago, I kind of had the same vibe as when he was being interviewed after, the, after a win and said, so many people have counted the team out. And I was like, you're fucking right. <laughs> like, we've got this. And uh, I'm not there now. And I want to get back to that. And, and But it's like, we're just running out of time, Gil. <laughs> we are running out of time. And what is it going to take? And Yeah, and <clears throat> I, I, I wanted to get back to that as well. And um, I, yeah, I, I, I wish I knew what it was going to take. But of all games... Um, you would have thought they would have at least gotten up for the one on April the 4th, the one in the middle, mm -hmm. um, you know, and figured out, okay, well, cause they, they always, they always, they always get up for Pittsburgh. They always ramp it up and, you know, figure out a way to at least compete in this game. And even right. if they lost this one, you know, by one goal or something, I would, or two Make goals, I would, have been, I would have, right. I would have been okay with this. This game was, um, this game was as bad as the Buffalo one was. This game was worse. You know why? Because they allowed themselves to be defeated by two of the worst cases of puck luck I've ever seen in my life. That's what they, that's what happened. The first two goals, the first two goals in this game, complete and total puck luck. And the first one, the first one, Ryan Shea, th th this is the one that bounced off of, look, look, and, and I know what you said earlier about, we don't like to pick on players. And I, I kind of have, I, I kind of have a pet peeve player and yeah, I'm going to bring him out. I'm going to haul his ass out on the carpet again. I'm sorry. But if, if there was such a thing about a, as a least valuable player of the week, I would say, yes, once again, Nick Jensen, although, although this goal it, well, let me bring up the replay, bear with me a minute. Um, while the NHL tries to sell itself to me again. Um, but there was, I think it was his first goal, but one of the two goals bounced off his foot and totally threw Lindgren for a loop. And he was going one way, the puck was going the other. And there was nothing, there was just nothing he could do because the puck took such a radical bounce. And I'm trying to see. So I'm watching the replay. No, it wasn't the first goal. Okay, first goal, he was screened. So it was obviously, so it was, must have been the second one, P.U. Joseph, and the one he scored. It must have been that one, because he, <laughs> that guy, that guy doesn't score too many goals to begin with. So I, you just showed me an ad, you stupid piece of crap app. Okay, you know what? I don't see Jensen on the ice for this one either, or was it? <sighs> Okay. All right. So I'm watching it. I'm watching it. God. I hate this thing. I really hate this thing. Okay. Scarbosa and Malenstein are defending Sandine. All right. Who's the other? Dowd is. Oh, that replay was crap. I mean, it was just crap. Oh, goody. Another ad. Uh, oh, Jesus, this is this is all 
the the caps were absolute garbage this week. Why shouldn't this podcast be? Okay, yeah, he was on the ice. Okay, there he is. I see him. I see him now. Yeah, this was the one. This was the one. This was the goal. 73 Joseph shoots it from the point. It bounces off of Jensen's foot and into the net. So that that was the goal. It, the camera does such a piss poor job of following the puck, you can't tell, but that's what happened. That That is what happened. It bounced off of Jensen's foot. Lindgren, Lindgren was going to his left to cover the pass. That was going to turn into a one-timer, but it got redirected. So, again, nothing he could have done about that one, but that that turned into the winning goal. Um, Bunting gets gets another one, 9.08 in the second. Um, Ovechkin would get a power play goal to get us all pizza for the next day. His 27th, Milano and LaPierre. Um, that would be the only... Again, um, Caps just took too long to wake up. Um, they they were just they fell behind by those two goals, and it was like they didn't do they didn't do all of the things that they should have done uh-huh. to try and win. I think it was like, okay, well, you know what? We're going to chalk this up as a loss. Let's pack it in. Let's save everything right. for Carolina the next night because they knew they had a back to back and just. I think that's what that that's what they did. And then who should ice it but our old friend Lars Eller, uh. the, the empty netter. Oh, and they finally figured out they finally figured out how to how to put how to how to uh two little letters, E N. Two little letters, all they had to add. Yep. A kindergartner could have figured that out. <laughs> Piece of crap map. Anyway, um, I don't need to. I don't need to explain it. I don't need to go over the stats. I don't need to draw up a chalkboard. I don't need to do anything, I, except talk myself till I'm fucking blue as a Smurf in the face about it. But bottom line, they lost because they didn't play to win. Yep. Um, and losing. Losing because you didn't do enough to win is more frustrating than losing outright to clearly the better team. Right. Because at least you can say, all right, well, they did do enough to win it. It was just the other team was better. That's fine. I'm okay with that. I'm always okay with that. (sighs) So I guess in a sense, the next game was an improvement because, (laughs) um, They did do seemingly enough to at least get a standings point. So we right. thought. Um, all right, let's run through it here. Ovechkin, 331, his 28th. Stroman Van Riemsdyk on the assists. Um, and then as if pizza weren't enough, uh, McNuggets, uh, you want to cite a McNuggets uh, along with that? Sure, let's do that. 1915, uh, Ovechkin again. Um, Carlson and Strom on the assist to, uh, for that one. And with this one, uh, the first one he drove to the net. I'm trying to remember how he played this one. I think this one was more of the same. Um, but I'm, I'm trying to... Okay, so... Oh, right. This one was off the face-off. Um, okay, so Strom wins the face-off. It hits off of Faravari. Carlson steers it from the point, and it hits off of Ovechkin. So, again, net front presence, and you score. Gee. I mean. <laughs> what a concept. What a concept. I mean, you know, Alan May gets paid to say it. Bruce Boudreaux, Alexa Landestoy, they all get paid to say it. I wish we got paid to say it, but we've been saying it too. <laughs> Right. So anyway, two nothing lead after twenty, and we're feeling good. Um, 
Now, unfortunately, um, I don't want to say the Caps uh, applied a rope-a-dope approach. I know when they just sit back. There's a difference here. Carolina is a very, they have an, a very unusual formula that happens to work very well. Um, and that is when they don't have the puck, they send everybody uh, after whoever does have it. So you got to play the world's worst game of keep away. If you don't want to do anything, you don't want to get scored on. And so sooner or later, you're going to give them the puck. Now, it, <sighs> This game, this is what frustrated me. About five or six times, I saw somebody, and it wasn't one player in particular, but I saw a white jersey. They'd have the puck. They'd bend over. And they would pitch for it, pick pitch for it backwards to nobody. And a split second later, a black jersey would pick it up. Oh. So it's bad enough that you have a team that is expert in taking away the puck. Now we have them giving it away. Right. And I think that, to an extent, contributed to the loss. So um, anyway, second period, uh, Slavin does an air pass. Um, to Gensel, who uh, was just barely on sides. I think it was a smart call not to challenge this one because unless you have an overhead cam that can prove it, how are you going to prove it? Because right. that, like I said, that sucker was in the air. And you know, Gensel was, I don't think he was offside, but even if he was, it would have been by a sliver. If that. But the puck was in the air, so how are you going to prove that unless you have an overhead cam? Well, they don't. So no no conclusive evidence equals goal stands. Okay, 2-1, 40 minutes over with. All right, fine. You want to sit back and just play defense and minimize their chances? Okay, fine. Oh, wait a minute. You gave them 13 shots All right. on net in the third while putting out only six of your own. I, I, again, I get the idea. You can't. You you can't. You know, if you if you shoot the puck on net, yes, technically you give it up. So you can't shoot too much because that's going to lead to what well, um, what amounts to basically a voluntary turnover. So you try to play, like I said, the world's worst game of keep away. Well. It only worked for so long. And then, yeah, uh, our favorite, uh, well, okay. So uh, eventually, uh, Caps would uh, give up power plays in the third, two to be exact. And naturally, Carolina scored on both of them. Natchez, his 24th at 1140. Um I'm not even going to pronounce this guy's game because I, I can't even say it. And uh, Kuznetsov <laughs> with the assist on that one. And our favorite asshole, I mean, Aho, um, his 34th, Burns and Gensel on the assist on that one. And, uh, yeah, as we know, um, the penalty that led to that, um, as Harry Vanderspiegel would say, this is some bullshit. I don't want to discuss it at length because you never want to say one play was why they lost the game. We're going to discuss it at a little bit of length here because it just so happened that the very same night, there was a very important college basketball game <laughs> played, by, played by um, not men, but women. Yeah. Um, it was Iowa UConn. And there was, for better or for worse, um, a big old light shined on it because of what has been thought to be a, and you can't see it, but I'm doing the air quotes with my fingers, controversial play. Right. And the outcry there was, don't let the, don't let the officials decide the game. Well, I, well. I happen to think it was apples and oranges here. Yeah. 
All right, so let me put let me put this in context as quickly as I can. So at the time that um, that the the penalty in question was called in the in the Caps game. All right, it was Sonny Milano called for interference against. No, no, it wasn't. No, I got the wrong one. Um, it was Rasmus Sandin called for <laughs> hooking, <laughs> hooking, wasn't even hooking. He barely had his stick on him for one thing, but Rasmus Sandin was called for hooking late. And I mean, late 1741 late in the game. This thing was going to go to overtime. All right. Because Kemper was playing lights out and the caps were doing all they could to minimize the chances. So this sucker was going to overtime. No, no. Sebastian Ajo charges the net. And while falling over Kemper's pad, Rasmus Sandin is shadowing him, just happens to have a stick up in the air. I don't think he touched him, honestly. The rear official, not the lead official, the rear official, Corey Sci-Fi, sci vret calls the penalty. And Spencer Carberry put it succinctly, and and he might have earned himself a bit of a fine on this one. But he basically he said, I'm paraphrasing here. Basically he said, well he's gonna he's gonna look at that and on the replay and regret that. And it, it wouldn't surprise me that the league decides, oh, hey, you you owe you you owe us some money, you know. Can't uh, your your Girl Scout cookie allowance is forfeited? Gimme, gimme, gimme! <laughs> As if Bettman needs his wallet to get any fatter. Anyway, but he's he was right. He was right because if you look at the replay, the he barely touched Res, Rasmus Sandin barely touched him with his stick. He fell over Kemper's pad. That's not a penalty. There was no way. And on top of which. I want to say about 90 seconds before that, maybe not even, maybe a minute before that, Nick Jensen got tripped. Uh, right. <clears throat> no call. He there didn't. Even, Mc, he didn't. McMichael hit no call. <laughs> well, there were a lot of non calls, yeah. but point being, not, I mean, barely seconds before they called, they decided to call this. There mm-hmm. was an obvious penalty that they let go. Okay, fine. You let that go. You let this go. Right? Give the, the give the players a chance to decide the game. Now, where the divergence is among versus the what happened in the basketball game. All right. Again, let me see if I can go through that really quickly. So the the foul in question there that. <laughs> decided the game um supposedly um so uh Yukon was down by by one they're pressing and uh one of their forwards basically um outstretched her arms and and blocked uh, an Iowa player from getting position to the point where she was knocked down um, and I, I admittedly, I don't know a whole lot. So I actually did some consulting with somebody who did, does know that being Casey Malone. Mm-hmm. And mm-hmm. at first he was like, yeah, you know what? I saw that. And I didn't think, I didn't think that that should have been called. And he got back to me a little bit later and said, you know what? I watched the replays. You know what? She definitely makes contact. Mm-hmm. And no, you don't want that called in the last minute of a game. You don't want the damn officials deciding deciding it. But if it's an obvious foul, then it has to be called. Yeah. Okay. So listen to my words, obvious foul, which that was. This wasn't. The hockey game, this wasn't. And on top of which, UConn still had a chance to at least tie the game because there was significant amount of time for them to go back cuz Iowa didn't do anything with their possession. If you saw the if you saw that game. So there was still time for them to at least tie it if not win it. Wasn't any such kind of situation for our caps, okay? So apples and oranges. Mm-hmm. Not not the same thing here. One situation 
team had a chance to win taken away. The other, not so much. Right. And you can call it controversial all you want. <clears throat> I think the officials did a good job in the college basketball game because oh, to, me, to me it was an call. obvious yep. to me it was an obvious foul. And yep. you on the other side of the earbuds, the speakers, what have you, if you're a fan of college b ball, you're probably throwing your iPod or whatever your device is into the fire right now. Fine. I don't care. If you if you disagree with me, okay, fine. Flame me all you want. It's about college basketball anyway. I don't claim to be an expert, but to me, and I consulted with somebody who knows a thousand times more than I do about it, and he said, you know what? It is. It was a foul. So I'm sorry. But in the case of the Caps, you let one thing go, you got to let this go. Yeah. And they didn't. And, you know, yes, Caps could have done a lot better job puck managing and maybe gotten another goal and maybe pressed a little more. You can say that. But in part, at least, yes, the referees cost the Washington Capitals at least one standings point. I am well, not I, gonna, I'm not going to quibble over that. They no, did. No. I was – I walked away – and you know, furious at this game, anyways, to begin with. And it was like the offic- officiating sucked. The team mm, better than against the Pens, but still not not the sixty minutes that we need to see. And you know who I am giving like my trophy biggest bitch award to this week? Oh, uh, I know who. I know who. But uh, yeah, go ahead. A Brenda Moore. Rod freaking Rod Holy. the mouth, not Rod the bod, Rod the mouth. Jesus but Christ. When did, I mean, he's always been uh, a hothead, but when did he become such a fucking crybaby? Oh all, my always, God. I want to throat punch him. He's always uh, been that way. I feel like he, it's just worse though. And it, I'm like, this was the, I felt like this was the worst I've seen him, but maybe it's just because like, you know, he's not usually my focus anyways. But I thought, you little fucking bitch. Like, I'm sick of you. And even, you know, Joe B and Locker were joking about him, like, you know, exploding on, on, uh, (coughs) so sorry. Um, You know, exploding at the refs and and being a hothead. So, like, yeah, I know he has it in him. But I felt like yesterday was just, oh, I just want to be Overboard. Totally. Like, just sit down, shut up, and... Just stop it. But yeah, so he just totally got under my, like he always, always, I, Carolina, I fucking hate. He just got me so fired up yesterday. Like you're such a bitch. <laughs> Completely. And, and I, you know, I'm sorry as a ref, as anybody, anybody doing your job, you're bound to have somebody complain about, you know, somebody doing your work, mm-hmm. you, you have to, you have to make, make a plan, somehow find a way to go above that, be above that right. and not let that influence you. You have to keep on doing your job the way you see fit and not have some outside influence change things. Somebody above you says, well, okay, yeah, yeah uh, here's, VIP so and so and they want XYZ. Okay, fine, whatever. But that's not the case here. You right. still have to do your job. And these two and the the Cyverit guy especially. Ugh. But these two guys unfortunately allowed Rod the Mouth to influence their jobs. Yeah. And Absolutely. These so it was Chris Rooney <laughs> um, and Corey Seivert. So I don't want to see these two on a playoff officiating roster. No, I don't. Because no. if they're going to cave like that, they're not going to last two seconds no. in the playoffs. So that's, that's just, that was just bull crap that they allowed that to happen. But flip side of the same token, again, yes, the Caps could have done more to outright win this game or at least send it in into overtime. 
because as I said, they did have their share of giveaways. They didn't press the attack when they could have as much. They didn't deserve to lose this game, but they didn't do quite enough to win it either. But I thought at the very at the very least they deserved a shot to earn one standings point mm -hmm. and send it to overtime. But they didn't get that chance. Okay. Because the refs decided it for them. So <sighs> that that's that's my take on that. Um but it, you know, it is what it is, and you know what what you do with it is, you know, you 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 use it. There, there's a term, I, I you know, I used to do when when I was in high school. I I did I did theater, and our drama coach uh, would tell all the actors, "Okay, if you're having a bad day, you know what? Use it. Use that energy." to fuel your performance. Uh -huh. So that's what the Caps need to do here. T take the anger, the energy from, damn it, we could have had a point here. We were robbed. Use that into the next game, which is tomorrow, 6 o'clock puck drop back in Cap 1 against Ottawa. Ottawa, who is at this moment way out of the playoffs. Uh-huh. Uh, destined to finish under 500. Um, so they don't have to wipe the floor with them, but I would like to see that. I would like to see the Caps come out pissed off and yeah. blast them all to hell. Well, that's just it. They can't go into it like, oh, it's just Ottawa. Yeah, no. Uh, you're you right. know, at, at this you're point, right. go in, annihilate them. Don't care. Go, don't, go in. Don't get any injuries. Go back to playing how it was a couple weeks ago, and and let's you know try to do something with these last. What is it? Five games left. Yeah, but at least in this game, stick your collective hand up their collective ass and make them your puppet. <laughs> there you go. And put them on public television well, where they belong. All right. That's what. That's how they should come out. In this game. Um, so to finish previews of coming attractions. Um, so that's tomorrow at six, which is why we're doing the podcast now. It being Saturday the 6th um, in the late afternoon. Uh, so next game that week, they go up to uh, Little Caesars. Um, um, that got me wanting pizza again. Hopefully Ovechkin scores there. Uh, that would be appropriate enough. Cool against Detroit big big game there they got they got to get the two points I don't think a, a, a tie or overtime loss is going to do they've got to get two points um, they got some direct competition there and then it's back to Buffalo where I really hope they got revenge on their minds because um, no excuses. I think no no excuses and I think I think Buffalo is is kind of playing possum and, and fooling a lot of teams into thinking oh you know we're we're left for dead, uh, so, but but they're not playing dead. And they're they're kind of on the outside a bit, but there's there's still something of a threat. There's still still some life there. So I want them to come out in that game too. And then um, Saturday is their next game. They go back. I'm pretty sure that is back home. Yes, that's back home. Saturday the 13th against the Lightning. 5:30 start there. That one's going to be tough. Um, as I think I, the, the lightning have already clinched, so they may, they may go into rest mode a little bit, but there, it's still going to be a tough out is that one. Mm -hmm. Um, and then the last week finishing out the season, it's a back-to-back, -back, uh, Monday, Tuesday, Boston, Philly. Mm -hmm. Um, that, so that, that's going to be kind of brutal, but yeah, those are the next four, uh, really key week. This is this is really going to decide it here, I think. The Caps cannot come out of this, I think, with no less than six points. If if they want to if they want a real shot, well, at um depending on what Philly does at at third place, if not the wild card number 2. Right. Um so eight points on the line, I think they got to get no less than six here. Uh, because they can't depend on their competition losing, and because part of this is is with their direct competition. So, you know, you want to put them out of out of business. Mm -hmm. 
that's that's the idea so all right well i mean look like like anna said we're we're entitled to rant here and we're not We don't mean to piss on the team, but I kind of feel like they pissed on us a little bit. So oh, you're not a fan if you're not frustrated and 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 then you know supportive and you know everything that comes in between. That that's what happens. That's what true fandom is. You know, you're gonna have your moments, and yeah, we can be frustrated, and but it doesn't mean like. Oh, I'm not going to be a, a Caps fan. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to start, you know, becoming a, a Bruins fan or something. You know, whatever. You just you you can get frustrated, you can get passionate, but no one here is is doing or saying anything that isn't obvious. Um, but like you said, we're not getting paid for our opinions, <laughs> but we're gonna, you know, I'm we're in it. We're gonna watch the next five games. Let's hope that there's more after that, but. There, you know, we've we've spoken our piece here, and and we're hoping for the best, and that's starting tomorrow at six. Yeah, and I I don't know how I I, I don't know how uh, like I said uh, like we said the, the the wizard the shaman I don't know uh, who 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 Sorry. we have to call upon, but uh, they gotta have some they gotta find a way to have some better puck luck. I mean, especially in that Buffalo game. Yeah. Oh my God. Well, let's call them the totality because that's a word that if I hear it one more time, I feel like I'm going to just vomit (laughs) in my mouth of the eclipse on Sunday, on Monday. Totality. See the totality of the Capitals. (laughs) Uh, Yeah. So shaman, solar eclipse, uh, earthquakes, whatever you got. Something. As long as it's good juju to our boys. Something to, to at least give them better results on the ice, because that that game, I swear, I mean, it was every other shot was was ping off the off the pipe <laughs> right. or or poom off of pad. So ping yeah. poom ping ping poom ping poom sounded like the worst hip hop song ever. Mm. Yeah, but definitely a frustrating week, but. We're not, look, bottom line, we're not giving up on this team. No reason to just yet, but they have to find it within themselves because we don't know. We discussed it at length. We don't know when Oshi, if Oshi is going to return this mm-hmm. season. So they're going to have to find it. They're going to have to find a way to, oh. to win these games. And some of these games are quite winnable. Oh. And so they have to find a way to do it that there's no there's no other way to say it right there's no getting around it there's no tunneling under there's no flying over there's only one direction they got to go in and that's through that's the only way they're going to get to where they need to go and that's through it so all right i think uh we've spoken uh quite enough uh for <laughs> this week we're at, at we're about an hour so that's uh 15 oh. minutes quite less than last week. Uh, I know we've gone along quite a bit these last few weeks, but uh, I think we've trimmed off quite a bit of time and this time I'll keep it off. Um, So we're going to stop it here. Thanks for joining us again for this episode. We will see you next week, hopefully. Um, Oh, geez. You know what? I'm sorry. I, I totally forgot. I totally forgot. I would do, uh, Mermaid, if you can bear with me, I completely mm-hmm. forgot about the takes from the group. Um, oh shit! <laughs> oh yeah. So okay, let's let's go through those real fast. Okay, so let's start with Mr. Robbie Gross, our content partner over at Sports on the Hill. By the way, uh, he comes back, so we'll be on there Monday night mm-hmm. to cover Caps Talk. Will we? Uh, So he says, I am very frustrated that we had such a chance this week to move up with Philly and Detroit losing so much, and yet we lost five in a row ourselves, especially last night up to nothing. Could not have sustained O pressure. And finally, DK stood on his head and so little goal support other than Ovi. Yeah, all true. Um, 
yeah, we pretty much covered that, but yeah, uh, in, in greater detail, that's what happened in the, in the Carolina game. Um, Doug Lucerarian, uh, with only a handful of games remaining and a playoff spot still up for grabs, how are we viewing this season regardless of the outcome to end the regular season? Success, failure, big surprises, good and bad? Um, well, like I said, um, last week, on last week's episode, uh, regardless of where the Caps finish in the standings, and whether or not they make the playoffs, mission accomplished because the goal was to start the rebuild in earnest, get the younger players in them, or at least a good chunk of them um, uh, embedded into the lineup. They have been. They are now an integral part of the roster and maybe work out some of the older players. They've done that and they've managed to improve. So regardless, again, mission accomplished and yes, uh, I would call that a success because most would have said, oh, they're definitely a, a lock to miss the playoffs. They might still miss the playoffs, but they're not a lock to miss the playoffs. Right. You got to love their compete, even with this week being as bad as it is. So, Doug, if you're listening, hopefully you are. Uh, I hope that answered that. Um, okay, this one, uh, Wayne Burnett. Um, three biggest three biggest issues I've seen are evident for most of the season. We're too easily boxed into the boards. We bring it on because we throw the puck into the – okay, the first part, I don't know if I agree with that because when they've scored, uh, it's been in close. So if we're being boxed into the boards a lot, then how are they scoring – how are they getting in close to score the goals? Uh, granted, a lot of it is on the power play where they have the man advantage conveniently enough. I give I give you that. But I wouldn't say they're boxed into the boards all that much because they are getting chances in close in in home plate, that home plate area in front of the goal. So I don't know if I agree with that. Um, we bring it on because we throw the puck into the corner. No obvious support. Yeah, I, they are prone to do that. Um, we're suckers for a man on man offense. Mm, yeah. Um, need to find a way to, uh, my comment on that is, you know, even the younger guys could stand to get a quicker first step towards the, the puck, but that that'll come with experience and time, um, need though, stretch, need to stretch the passing and see the game more spread out. Um, sometimes they do that. Sometimes not so much. Um, again, that'll come with chemistry and time knowing where the other guy is they're they're developing that but i wouldn't say that that's completely you know they ignore that mm -hmm. uh do not concentrate on shooting the puck um agree um 20 20 to 25 shots isn't going to cut it uh pass before shooting and other teams just get trash goals because everyone else shoots it totally agree there spot on uh, every goalie will miss something need to get our numbers up and pick up those goals yeah uh obviously when they score you know, the numbers don't lie. When they score more than three a game, three or more a game, they win usually. So, yeah, we need to find a way to generate more offense, uh, more shots at the net, uh, on the net somehow. Um, so, yeah, I uh, uh, totally agree with you there, Wayne. So, uh, and the last take on the last, well, all right. So uh, Cheryl Ann, of course, chimes in with, don't get me started on the officiating last night. Yeah, well, we, we've we already had a diatribe about yes. that. So we, we hear you. And the last one from uh, the loquacious one, Lorenzo Robinson, the officials missed calls on both sides um, that they did. Uh, both goalies had good games. Caps were lucky to have scored two early goals, but it, once again, their lack of consistent defensive play in the second and third period resulted in another loss. Um, I would say not so much the defense, but the penalty kill killed them. Uh -huh. They didn't do what they needed to do. Uh, so modify that a bit, at least from my view. Um, they were outshot, spent most of the game in D zone. Well, that was kind of their plan. There was that was kind of the plan to just kind of absorb the punches and you know do what they can to keep the chances to a minimum. Most of the time they did okay with it. The rest of it was Kemper. Uh -huh. So, Caps need to play a complete game tomorrow for one hour against the Ottawa Senators. Could not agree more. One hundred percent. Everybody needs to be engines firing, cylinders firing. Um, you know, pistons firing, lubricated, uh, you know, oil everywhere, you know, do, do, do what you got to do. So, um, without being too vulgar. So yeah, totally agree there. 
Um, I'm surprised I haven't made you wretch yet. Yeah, uh, I had. It was a little. You're, you're too. you too. Used it was a little cringe worthy, yeah. but I'll let it go. Okay. It's been All two right. weeks. It's been two weeks, so you're you're getting back into it. All right. <laughs> yeah. Okay. At least I didn't say moist. <laughs> or <suck it. laughs> okay, so that'll do it for this week. Um, so uh, welcome back to the mermaid, of course. Uh, Thank you. So she'll be back with us uh, next week to cover the four games that we mentioned. Hopefully, we're not as pissed off, or don't have to be as pissed off. <sighs> I'm hoping, but we'll see. Me too. Yeah. Come so on, get that shaman vibe going. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so we're going to be shaming in the, them into doing some better things next week. So there you go. We're hoping. Uh, all right. So for the mermaid, Anna Knox, this is the Blue Liner on Point signing off and reminding you that, well, I decided to get myself another hobby, and that's uh, going out and uh, owning an ant farm. And it so happens that one of these ants on the ant farm, uh, well, has a bit of a personality. He decides to dress himself up as a clown to cheer up all his ant friends. You know what that makes him? Nope. An antidepressant. ant. Oh. Okay. Hallelujah, and let's go Caps. Go Caps. This has been another episode of the Power Play Point Podcast. All episodes are available from... Apple Podcast, the Podbean app, blueliner77.podbean.com, and now available from Stitcher. Music by Joe McAllister, voiceover by Jeffrey Cockle. Good morning, good afternoon, and good night, Power Play Point Podcast. Thanks for listening. <sighs> go, go, go. <laughs> that has to be one of your own. Maybe. <laughs> I'm going to say yes. <laughs>